You are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to more simple language. Today's topic is describe SLA architecture. Notice the keyword describe. So we're not doing hands on today. This is a topic in the CCMP route exam. It'll be known as CCMP enterprise exam come February 24th, 2020. Let's go ahead and take a look at exam blueprint. See where we came from, where we headed. Hashtag lab every day. Also visit laberryday.com. And please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button before you leave as well. This is exam blueprint implementing Cisco IP routing exam code 300-101. It'll be exam code 300-401. We are just on the latter half, the very, very, very last portion. We only got a couple sections left. We just wrapped up the, we briefly just talked about, you know, describing IPv6 NAT. Today we are going to describe SLA architecture. But then after that, we are going to configure and verify IP SLA, but just the ICMP version. Right. Or IP, I, ICMP, um, I guess, mechanism of it. So SLA architecture. Let's talk about what that is. SLA is in short, it stands for service level agreement. Right. You can have an SLA for anything. You can have a service level agreement between you and your own, your air conditioner company. Right. You write down a contract or something like that or. Uh, this happens a lot with managed services providers. They basically say, okay, before I service you, we're going to, we are going to agree on what I, what, uh, what my service level will be. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the expectations of, that you have of my company. So if you hired me as a managed service provider, you're saying, okay, uh, the internet will be up 99%, 99.9% of the time, right? You're also saying, we'll make sure that the power doesn't go out 99% of the time. We'll make sure, you know, you're saying all of this stuff and that we need to agree on that, right? That's what a basically a service level agreement is. We're, we're agreeing on you. It's, we're basically agreeing on what you can do for me as a company. In terms of networking, we are saying that as far as that's a service level agreement, nine times out of 10, we're saying, okay, you could say, the quality of my video is going to look like this 99% of the time or 95% of the time or whatever the case may be. Now, when we're talking about the SLA architecture, let's go ahead and head over to the slides uh, for like a more brief uh, description of it. And y'all know I like to just kind of like say things simpler, but then, you know, I'll, I, then I'll bring over the uh, official definition. IP service level agreements measure the current performance of the network. The routers will collect the data and can be used for tracking. For example, you can use SLA to view the status of static routes or for PBR. That's just an example, right? So now that's what service level agreements are. We're saying we're going to give you this quality of service. Nah, that's probably a, 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 a not a good example, but we're just going, we're saying this is how much, you know, service we're going to give you, right? Don't expect more. This is, but you should not expect less either. IP SLA uses operations that define a type of packet that will be sent from the source to the destination. A destination device is not always required, but it is for certain types of traffic. The destination router is referred to as the SLA responder. So we're kind of measuring the type of networking performance we're going to have. We're going to have, I believe, what's called a... Um, yeah, so we're going to have the responder, but we're also going to have a query device. So we're going to have a device that's going to be, you know, maybe sending some pings or whatever. And that's what we're going to set up, I believe, in the next video. See how long it took for that ping to come back and see if we had any kind of latency or any kind of jitter, any kind of loss. And then we measure that, right? If it doesn't meet that SLA agreement, then we either failed or, you know, the company could just get at us, be like, hey, man, you said we was going to get this kind of service. What's going on here? You know? You know, these ping packets only, you know, we, we have this kind of latency and that's what that's the point of, you know, a service level agreement. But there are ways to set this up so that way we can measure the service level agreements. Right. Or the statistics, rather. Here's a basic architecture of uh, SLA right here. Right. So we have the customer site right over here. Then we have the knock, which is where I would be. You know, because I work in a knock, basically, if y'all didn't know. And we use these people over here are monitoring the SLA by um, by getting these um, by getting what's like these traps. Right. Remember, we covered SNMP traps and stuff like that. Right. Anytime we get any kind of alerts, any like interfaces going down 
or if the, there's a lot of jitter or slowness in the network, right? We're going to get these alerts, right? Well, how do we get these alerts? We get these alerts with SLA architecture, right? So as you can see here, end-to-end -end monitoring and decision making based upon availability, jitter, latency. So if we have like some packet loss, right, we'll get some, we'll get some net and threshold notifications over here. And, and then the, and then the Knox is going to receive it and be like, uh oh, well, we've got some latency uh, on this server right here or whatever. Right. And then, yeah, so we'll get these traps and then the Knox is going to know about it. And that's when they're going to have to either contact the ISP or, you know, find out why we're getting a lot of jitter or latency. Right. And that's pretty much what I do. Right. So we have these also. This is the basic. Again, we're just discussing the entire architecture of the SLA right here. Then we have uh, another customer site right here. Right. So we'll have like some ping packets that's going to keep, you know, probing the network to make sure that everything is fine. Right. And if we get like some ping packets that come back too slow or that's measuring latency and packet loss, obviously we'll get the notifications, the traps over here, at the knock or IT. Right. Now, this down here are the other SLA devices. Right. We'll have these devices that's going to let us know whether we're meeting the threshold or not, or we're meeting the SLA agreement. Let's say our agreement says, okay, you're not going to have any packet loss that's less than, I don't know, like 60% or something like that, or, you know, no more than 10% packet loss. If you go over 10% packet loss, then we're going to get a trap notification or an SNMP notification and let the knock know or let whoever know and that needs to be set up on the router here. And we'll do that in the next video. For, we're gonna configure IP SLA, right? But there's different ways to, there's different service level agreements or quality of service that we are going to, we can measure here, right? So here's some examples. These are some type of SLA traffic, right? Like I mentioned, we can, me we can measure echo, which is basically like ping, right? That's what ICMP is. And this is what we're going to set up. And this is also that notice here, it's in the red, it's on the exam. Setting up at IP, ICMP SLA, right? We could measure jitter with it as well. Packet loss, that's what it measures here, right? So we could also set up with SLA. It's not on the exam. This stuff is out of scope for it, but we can measure RTP, which is real-time protocol, I believe it is. And that's, uh, that, that's for VoIP traffic. We can also measure TCP connections to establish a TCP connection. That's like for BGP. No, you know, BGP runs on TCP. I think that's like port. That's your pop quiz for the day. What is the port number? Yeah, what is the port number that BGP TCP traffic runs on? If you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments below. What is the port number that BGP TCP traffic runs on? Please put in the comments below if you know any answer to that. You could also measure UDP traffic if there's any echo and jitter. You could also measure any kind of DNS traffic, DHCP, HTTP, FTP, and so on and so forth. So you can measure, you know, if these level service level agreements are being met with IP SLA. And in the next video, we'll configure and set it up. But we are just going to configure and set up ICMP. Again, that's like official term of ping. That's what ICMP is. It's basically ping. So, and that's what we'll set up in the next video. That is all I got for y'all today. Again, that's today was just to describe the basic IP SLA architecture and what you saw in, in that network to poly -E, That's just like a basic setup for IP SLA. Again, in the next video, we will configure and set it up. I don't know if we're going to do it with hardware or GNS3. Can't remember how I uh, planned it out. But anyways, that is my YouTube page. That's my Twitter handle. Go ahead and add me on Twitter. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button before you leave. That is all I got for y'all today. So in other words, please comment, like, subscribe to the network. 